Hey guys, this is Chris from DSX Machina, and we are here talking about the Robotech Macross Dogfight game. And here it is. Now this is the basic box. They are on Kickstarter now. And uh, we're going to talk about the rules very quickly. I'll talk about some of my comments. Uh, this is uh, technically a, a, not a paid preview. They have asked me to do this video and I am going to accommodate them the best I can. So what we have is the basic set here, and we're also going to take a look at uh, some of the pieces. Um, this is everything that's included in the basic set, uh, including these minis. Now, these are the minis that come with it. You get, this is for the basic set. I don't have the larger sets, obviously, because that's part of Kickstarter. I got the officer pod and three modes of a Valkyrie slash Veritech fighter. Uh, this is um, somewhat anachronistic Myria colors. Now, just before we go into it, I want to talk about uh, the elephant in the room, which is the previous miniature campaign, Robotech RPG Tactics. Now, RPG Tactics um, made $1.4 million, but failed to deliver through massive piss management and um, several other things, which I won't get into. Uh, but these are their minis, which you can, which you can get, and I'm sure, once again, positively can use. And some people have asked, uh, and I actually recommended that they have as an add-on an expansion which just gives you the game components without getting more minis, uh, if people who have this game, and I think it's a good idea. Uh, but we can see here the molds are pretty close in scale. I mean, this looks smaller, but that's only because it was on a larger base. When we take the jet modes into, into consideration, we can definitely see that the palladiums are, I would say, 15%, 20% larger, maybe 10%. And when we see the uh, the two robots next to each other, so we can see here the difference in scale. Uh, once again, the robot is slightly larger, the Batroid. Um, but it's not that much. And I think it's not that much to really be uh, a concern. The really interesting thing is comparing the Minitech model to... Uh, the palladium model now just off of the cursory examination you think again, the palladium is larger but it actually isn't uh they have the same size gun the same size torso the arms are basically exactly the same we can see them side by side here and that the actual indication is the uh, legs the legs in the palladium are longer than the one for minitech and obviously as we can clearly see the minitech models are uh, much higher quality. Uh, the poses are more dynamic, and as someone who has assembled these, I can also attest that the mini techs are far easier to build, um, way more detail, easier to build, uh, just overall better quality. So we're going to move those guys aside, and we're going to talk about this system and these rules. Now you guys get uh, in the basic set, you get twelve of these. No, twenty. So twelve. Of these, yeah, twelve of these. Uh, because every single model, and this is technically only two, because this is three modes of the same guys. We'll put them next to there, so you can see the scale going. And uh, you need twelve of uh, these to, for these two. So every model basically requires six of these uh, miniatures of these of these stands, and each of them gets a set of these. Now, uh, these are the flight paths. Everyone gets a ruler. These flight paths. Um, there's actually two sets here. We can divide the lines right there. And every player gets a set of these, even though, um, depending on the model you use, you may not have access uh, to all of them. For example, the in the uh, jet mode, uh, the, jet pl uh, the Valkyrie player gets access to this pad, which the, uh, uh, the officer pod does not get access to. So that's one example. We also have these... Um, component uh, boards and these tokens here and then these missile tokens and so forth. I'm just going to do a quick overview of the rules here. We're going to have a, like an example of combat. I'm not going to go through the whole sequence of uh, beginning to end, but uh, you'll get enough information to know how to play the game. And we have these three panels for each of the modes of the, of the Valkyrie and then the single one for the officer pod. So what is this game? So this, uh, so uh, Macross uh, Dogfight, Robotech Macross Dogfight, even though the word uh, Robotech is up there, and then Macross is down there. Uh, this is a simultaneous action selection programming mecha combat game. If you think it's actually like the Palladium RPG Tactics, you're very much mistaken. This game is uh, more closely related to War Machine and or Warhammer with large, uh, large numbers of units on, on a combat and using the rulers and so forth. This is similar to how X-Wing plays. I actually haven't played personally. I've seen X-Wing being played. but And so I can definitely attest that they are similar, which means 
fury units and uh, more detailed and um, a bit more of a board game rather than a tactical miniatures game. Okay, so we're gonna have a, so just a quick round, show how things work. Technically, these models should be on opposite ends of the table, but my arms are four feet long, so we're just gonna keep it at that. As I already mentioned, that this game is a simultaneous action selection, so there isn't, isn't really initiative. They have some rules about determining uh, and, uh, who gets results first, but most of these attacks occur simultaneously. So, first of all, for this uh, Valkyrie player, he would be using this mode. And generally, you do start off with one of those, so you can close the distance really, really quickly. And uh, and then we have all of his little uh, white paths, and then we have Chiron with Bottle Pod, and then these are uh, basically tokens to help us coordinate our movement. So, the, f way the, the way the first round starts, each player programs their action. This involves adjusting their altitude from one, two, or three, right? Right now they're all set at one. And then you basically program if you want your new altitude to be stay the same, go up a one or, and you can't go up to three. You can only move up one at a time. So everyone, we have a choice of either uh, staying at one or going up to two. There isn't any, um, Pivoting, you basically are always moving. You can't uh, stay still. You're always going to be moving uh, regardless of what that, what, what that direction is. So uh, we have our path here, and then you'll be doing the same. Now, of course, in this mode here, he doesn't have a lot of options. For example, you notice he can't just sidestep left or right. If you spin this dial, we'd see nothing. He cannot go backwards either. We spin this dial around. The only thing the variator can do is forward, and he has a couple of options. He has a one, he actually has quite a bit of options here, and of course he has access to the four, which the, um, uh, the officer point does not have access to. And let's say he wants to move to altitude two. So we can see that uh, the uh, VF1J has a dodge of three, the officer pod has a dodge of two. Uh, these tokens can go one to two or three to four, uh, depending on your skill. I imagine that a uh, Quangum Rob or female power armor would have a uh, probably a dodge of four. Uh, potentially different pilots can alter these skills. It'd be really neat if um, they advanced these cards to have more than just a single class ability. Like it would be neat if Max, uh, if he's a character, actually can increase his dodge by one on his Veritech. Stuff like that. These are just interesting little ideas. So what we're going to do now is, is program a movement. Now most of the time we would be doing this um, uh, privately, but uh, there's no other player here. So let's say that the officer battle pod, he's going to go to level now you can see him he can do basically almost any maneuver in any direction so he is going to go straight as well and he's going to go and he is going to say now he's going to go straight he wants to go for this guy so he's going to move a three the vf1j is also going to go to level two and he's going to go straight four and this would be done secretly and then they reveal and then simultaneously they will do their movement and i'll show it how it works uh, with the camera above so you can see this is the two altitude, and base, uh, first of all, you, what you do is you mark your position with this little piece here, and that helps you um, in case you move this thing. So that goes there. Your new altitude goes here. Let's get that into position. And that's his direction. I move three, which means I think we're actually overshooting each other. No, nope. we're really, really close. I'm moving to altitude two as well, so I could do that. Take my guy off because it's easier. Put my stand in place, and I'm going to put my three. Oh, we are just basically directly in front of each other. There we go. So it's directly straight ahead. That's me. I move forward, and then the jet moves forward. Now there is an arc, which can be indicated by this little arrow right here, it tells you your arc. And as we can see, we are both in each other's arcs because we are ba we basically kamikaze towards each other. And we've also indicated through this that we are on the same altitude. So in two and two. So these are basically done. We're not playing with these anymore. Uh, I also want to make a point of mentioning their hit point counter. We have two hit point counters here. Um, and uh, with larger combats, obviously you'll need more. And uh, in the case of these situation, both the officer pod and the VF uh, have 20 hit points. Uh, I imagine, of course, that uh, something like the Mac 2 monster would have probably uh, 40 or 30 hit points, a lot of hit points. So that's the hit points, and we're gonna have blue for the Veritech and uh, 
that for the Officer Pod. Now, the other thing I want to talk about we haven't mentioned yet, these are cross event decks, which I am positive we're going to be using in just a few seconds. We're going to have one for the Veritech and one for the Battle Pod. And also we have those tokens. We're going to be using these combat as well. That's going to be another thing we're going to be showing off. And we also have their cards with their potential weapons. Now, the Veritech has a lot more uh, to work with because obviously he has different modes. So we are in Batroid modes. We'll get that, that Batroid out of there. Uh, that is Batroid. That's Boy That's Fighter mode. That's where we want them. Fighter mode. Boom, boom, boom. And then we also have the, the Guardians. We'll move that aside. So this is the weapons that he has access to. Fighter, 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 fighter. He has his head guns, his uh, GU-11, and missile pods. Now, it's important to note that these have ranges. And obviously, this close up, we know that we are... Uh, immediately in range, we can check our movement here, uh, so our ruler, and we can easily see that we are within the one. So basically, the VF1J can use any weapon he wants, uh, like the GU11. Now, we, we're looking here. Uh, at this point, we have to be co uh, cognitively aware of altitude. Now, we are both at the same altitude. And that brings us to these uh, damage decks. There's, there's gamma, there's beta, and there's alpha. Now, these are entirely denoted on your altitude. So with the beta, if your level equal to your target level, you do more damage or can do more things. Alpha is higher. And then ga the, uh, gamma is if your target is below you. So in this situation, uh, everybody would be uh, in their right mind to make sure that they use a same level attack. So when we're going back to Rick Hunter, we're looking for a beta attack, and there he is. So he currently has a beta attack, and by coincidence, it's the GU-11, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty standard. I will say that a lot of these weapons don't have much variety. There's a bit of range. Uh, there are some other things. Like I said, he, if uh, he had an alpha, if he was at a different altitude, he could use that one, which has a slightly better hit. Uh, but I'm hoping so we'll, we'll get more variety. Um, the Chiron unit only has four because obviously he doesn't have a transforming mode. So he's also going to want to find a beta card. And we can see he has one beta card, which is once again a short range Larbor cannon. So this weapon is going to go off. So these are the two weapons these guys are going to be using. We are going to hit each other at the same time. So in the advanced rules, you involve these things, which I absolutely love. These are little panels. Same thing, programming as before. Uh, in the case of uh, these guys, they both have a, a firepower of three. Now, the rule book actually has a flat rule of three tokens, but I imagine that the Mac 2 monster is going to have a lot more. Perhaps the Quantum of Combat Power will have, have some more. And also, potentially, certain characters may actually give you more tokens as well. So it gives you a better option. So each side, when once again secretly insert these in, in any of these spots uh you maximum two so uh sorry three so you can have this is a two and this is a one or you can have uh three ones like that right and if you have a dodge token you want to use dodge token for example maybe chiron wants to do that dodge and that would be his mode and he would put that uh here that one's going to be like this so that's basically how these two guys would set up their combat to uh, trays their missile trace. Then you would reveal at the same time, and at that point we would have, first thing you would do is the dodge. Now we can see here this would move one, and this would move two. Now obviously this could be the opposite direction, and, and in the situation, like for example, if this was the opposite direction and we went off this way, this missile would not actually count, it would be a miss. Uh, as with this one. The only ones that hit are the ones where they can basically um, match these symbols on the other side. But we're matching these up together. This moves over one, this moves over two, uh, which means they could not get on top of each other. Now in this situation here, we look at these lines, we can see that one, two shots pass through here. This two token, two shots pass through here. This row cancels out. Pretty simple. So that dictates the number of these cards you can draw. So, so both players are drawing two cards. So with the Veritech, he pulls out these, and he gets a 2 plus 1 on equal altitude, so he's going to use that one because that's the better card. So that does 3 uh, does, does three damage to Chiron. Chiron's going to draw his two cards as well. He gets the same thing. He gets a 2 damage plus 1 
so he's also going to do three damage. Neither of these people get a critical hit, unfortunately, and that's basically it. So we put these in the bottom, and that's their hit. So at that point, we're doing three damage. We're going to knock that down. One and 17 for both of these units. Pretty straightforward, right? And that basically ends that first round. Moving on to the second one. At this point, the fighter doesn't want to burn past in all this, so he's going to want to gain his distance. So he, at this point, he's going to transform. And let's say he's going to transform to battleoid mode. So we're going to swap that model out with the uh, battleoid. Uh, now, of course, the orientation is this way because that's going forward. Now, he's actually not going to want to slam into this guy. He's going to want to go backwards. So he's going to turn around completely. And we can see here he has not very many options. He's going to go and he's going to go a, a back corner movement. That'll be his action. And he's going to move up to altitude three. Simultaneously, we, as we can see, the uh, officer pod is going to also want to, he's want to push the attack. And he's going to move forward. Uh, and I think... I should just do this randomly because I already know what the uh, Valkyrie is doing. So we'll see he's going to do this uh, forward. Now, one thing he wants to do for, for reasons that come clear is he wants to intersect with this guy's flight path. So I'm going to have him do a three this direction. So that'll be his movement. And once again, he's going straight. So these are the two guys. They would at that point reveal their movement. Now, at this point, we can remove. This is the old flight path that no longer applies. Like that, simple as that. Now, um, we also uh, determined that the officer pod is going to stay at his altitude. So he's going to move backward, and we, can ease, and we can tell from this point that he is going to be moving backward with a 1, and it's going to be going that direction. So we get a 1. I'm going to move that guy off to make it easy. Plot that down like that. We get our 3-stand. Three our three stand. So that's our 3-stand, and we, our guy moves to here. Still kind of facing this guy. Now, this guy here, he already has his uh, action exposed. He's going to move three forward, which can cause a bit of a problem because uh, that's going to be moving more. And we see we've got two issues. The first is our paths are crossing. And also that we are also crossing with our terrain as well. So we can know that because we know that I can't move in that direction. So in a situation like this... Um, this is what's called a cross event. If our paths touch or if our, base, uh, or if our bases conflict, then we have a situation. I'm going to spin that puppy around, and we can see here where I would go. Now, in this situation, uh, what we would do, we would remove this one because we know it's a cross event, so we'll get that guy out of there. And we'll slip this model in here, and we'll see it's going to conflict with that model. So we can use our position marker to find out where he's going to stay. He's going to go here, and uh, he's staying at altitude 2. So that's him. We know he's going to be right there. And uh, the other, also unfortunate thing is that he's overshooting the Veritech. So that's where he goes, and that's where he goes. But they're going to push him away because uh, that is a conflict. So that's where their position are. They have zipped past each other. I think this is a cool little thing because they're basically, he overshot. So now nobody is in anyone's firing arc. So there's no traditional combat using these trays, but we're getting a cross event. So the cross event involves these decks. It should be shuffled. Right? You have one for Rick Hunter, one for Chiron. These decks are identical. So we have their hit points here. So technically, all Rick Hunter can do is draw one card. Right? The arrows are also important. These operate basically the same as these trays do. That's step one. But Chiron gets to do three. So we see three identical cards here. So he could go with this one, which he's going to, or he can do this one. If you use this card, uh, these two things cancel out, nobody gets hurt. However, if he uses this one, it cancels uh, Rick's attack, but he does one extra damage. If he uses this card, all three damage goes to him, and he gets two damage. So that, there is a demand for you. There is a potential uh, of doing that one, but he's going to go with this one, which cancels out the two attacks from Rick and does one additional damage um, 
to to Rick Hunter. So these cards get uh, discarded. These ones get discarded. These get discarded. And that is this one. So at this end of at this cross event phase, uh, Rick Hunter has taken one additional point of damage. He is down to sixteen. Now, shockingly enough, that is really all you need to know. Now, Rick does have his own uh, class ability. We can see that here. And it says here, if you have less hit point than your target, each critical bonus deals one extra damage. That means if we get another uh, ability and he, and he draws a critical, I'll see if we can find a critical card here. Yeah, so that's a critical card. So if that's a critical and he has a weapon that has a critical ability, he'll do one extra point of damage. That's a critical. Chiron, we, we've just mentioned, he gets to draw three of those cards and pick one. Which means uh, Chiron is incredibly interested in keeping the combat very, very close. Uh, because it allows him to continue doing these cross-event cards. And that is a, basically how the rules uh, work down. Now, some things I'd like to see, once again, uh, I'd like to see cards that have uh, different numbers of these tokens. Have a dodges up to four, because we have a two and a two here. And in the case of the VF1J, he has a three dodge. It'd be nice to see a four, maybe even a five. You never know. Uh, something with more hit points than just 20 or maybe less. Imagine the battle pods might have a fewer hit points. Um, I like the variety of these to of these trays. Uh, it would be nice to see more variety with how these guys use. Like I said, um, if we match these guys side by side, uh, they're almost identical. Uh, we can see here the battleoid mode for the VF1J is considerably slower than the officer pod. But if he transforms to the jet, he can go really fast, for, faster than the uh, other guy. But he's also uh, stuck going in one direction. And then the guardian mode, similar thing. He's a bit more maneuverable. Um, he gets access to the twos. But when you get really get down to it, there's only one difference. Is that is the uh, Valkyrie gets this one in Battleoid. Other than that, their maneuvering is about the same. Uh, there's also a uh, wide three which I don't think any of them use. Um, and I would imagine something like the officer pods uh, and would potentially use that. I also like to see situations where um, there's more mitigation on these cards. Potentially somebody can add uh, these symbols. Perhaps they have a token that they can add that'll mitigate this deck. I, li I like the idea of, um, uh, what's it, we talked about this uh be having a variety. I wouldn't mind um, some more variety with these weapons so they can do a bit more. There's a bit more rules to them. Maybe a bit more variety with these cards, but that's what the Kickstarter is about, is, is expanding this current system. Uh, so that is basic, that is the, the rundown for the uh, Macross Miniatures game, the Robotech Macross Dogfight Miniatures game. And as you can see, in this type of situation, it would be kind of illogical to have 30 or 40 models per side. I think even on the high end, the, the most you can really field is four models, and I think that's actually pretty solid. Anything more than four, or even at four, I think it should be a two-on-two -two, uh, player combat, and I think that would be really fun if you see two different combats ha happening simultaneously. Be neat if somebody played Max and the, and the other played Miria, and they're against a bunch of... Uh, uh, battle pods and so forth. So I can see a lot of fun and variety. Uh, it'd be neat to have a, a cooperative mode because I think there is a potential using these programming cards to uh, create a situ situation where um, uh, where there's an automated player that either plays cooperative or solo. I think that's entirely possible. But that's basically the rules. And if you have any questions, leave in the comments. Um, I am working on a part two Robotech video uh, as a sequel to my current uh, Robotech retrospective, which you can find on my channel. Uh, that's the rules. If you have any questions, leave in the comments and like and subscribe and all that stuff.